Now for the remainder of the attacks, I'm really going to just blow through them very quickly. The expectation is that I, the tour guide, have shown you where the village is, and it's up to you, the student, to go back and visit it. Read the papers, read the white papers, look at the slides, watch the videos multiple times for each. If you really care about this material, you have to read a lot of stuff. So let's move our threat tree off to the side. And next, I'm going to bulk multiple attacks under a umbrella category that I'm going to call remap attacks. These have to do with when someone finds a clever way to map something else over SMM and then subsequently write into SMM. So the first one is the most literal remap attack because there's a couple of registers that are called remap limit and remap base. And there's a defense of locking those registers as well as locking some other registers. So let's see about that. Now I told you before that because the memory map IO range steals a chunk of the physical memory address space, it is you know undesirable. You've just lost megabytes and megabytes of RAM that you could otherwise be using for your operating system. So there is this capability to remap a chunk of higher physical address space above four gigabytes and have it be that that RAM that was lost to MMIO gets reused and remapped up to high address range. So this is the picture I showed you before from the Invisible Things Labs research in 2009. And like I said, there is just literally a register called remap limit and a register called remap base. And they say to take memory from below four gigabyte and that is used at uh, for MMIO right here and map it up to there. So what they had found was that they could take this range and overlap it with SMRAM and consequently writing to this RAM up here would allow them to write into SMRAM and similarly read from it. So first they read from it, then they audited the code, then they found vulnerabilities. So the fix for that was, you know, they just had a, a one-liner here that said Intel patched the bug in 2008. This was done by patching the BIOS code to properly lock the memory configuration registers. Now this attack was against a actual Intel system, an Intel reference developer board, but it's always very much the case that just because, you know, Intel patches their particular BIOS doesn't mean that this doesn't exist on a whole bunch of other BIOSes from a whole bunch of other vendors. So, you know, this was a interesting little, you know, quirk. And I think at, you know, circa 2009, uh, researchers were not as good about, you know, going around to every vendor and saying, does this apply to you? Does this apply to you? That's uh, something that, you know, a lot of us learned in circa 2000, you know, 13, 14, 15, about the coordination between different BIOS vendors. Okay, well, that was, see, that's as much as I'm going to be going into these things. That was the remap attack. Next is overlapping the GART graphics aperture remap table with the SMM. So there's a graphics address remapping table. And uh, DeFlow in 2007 described the GART in the context of virtualization attacks. And then later on in 2010, after the uh, research on SMM had started to pick up, he had you know, mentioned that specifically in the context of attacking SMM, while simultaneously saying that you know, the GART has gone away from uh, newer hardware and so it wasn't applicable. But there's a, a picture that I like a little bit better uh, available from the Intel folks when they redescribed it. Anyways, the basics of it, as described in the original paper, was that there's this graphics aperture and if you overlapped the graphics aperture with SMRAM, it would mean that, as it says, calls to the SMRAM will first reach the graphics aperture and be redirected to B. So an attacker could put some code over here and consequently overlap this thing and it would redirect to the attacker's code instead of the real SMM code. So a slightly more detailed picture, sort of relevant in the context of, you know, we saw stuff about stolen graphics memory and things like that in the context of TSEG. So there's this GTT MMIO, there's the graphics memory, there's a graphics aperture, and whereas normally uh, it's supposed to be the case that, you know, graphics aperture is, you know, redirecting into graphics memory, instead it can be made to redirect into SMRAM and consequently these uh, GTT PTEs, as in uh, page table entries, can allow for uh, redirection into SMRAM. Net result is that an attacker can read and write SMRAM when they're not supposed to be able to. The next attack is overlapping the APIC, Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controller, with SMM. All right, so in the memory sinkhole attack by Damas at 2015, uh, he basically took an advanced, uh, overlapped the Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controller, which is a memory mapped IO range, with SMM. 
Now we said at the time that there was actually a hardware fix that was added into second generation cores and newer. Uh, and so those were about circa 2013 and this was found in 2015. So that means, you know, Intel had closed the fundamental hole in hardware uh, by the time this was actually found. So the basic idea was that, you know, the, again, it was kind of exploiting this fact of sort of like the cache attack of if the processor uh, sees that the APIC range is overlap, overlapped with the SMM range, then its access is going to effectively bypass the MCH. It's going to be, you know, routing here, but it's actually routing to, you know, RAM, which is SM RAM. So it's bypassing the access controls of the MCH at the time, or it would be, you know, nominally the PCH now had it not been fixed in other hardware. The sort of interesting thing about it was that it was an extremely, extremely constrained attack. There was just, you know, certain bytes that were actually writable within the APIC range, but he still found a way to, you know, pull it off on some systems to make it so that he could uh, still effectively corrupt the SMRAM in a way that allowed him to get arbitrary code execution. Now, the thing that I disagreed with about this research is that, you know, he claimed at the time it was an unpatchable vulnerability. And I don't think that's really true. So basically, a system management interrupt handler could check immediately upon entry into SMM, you know, is the APIC, has that been overlapped with my SMRAM range? Now, it is true that if it does that, and if it, you know, for instance, either crashes out or if it uh, relocates the APIC back to a sane memory range instead of SMRAM memory range, it would be breaking the quote-unquote feature of being able to relocate the APIC. But uh, I personally don't think that many people were actually using that as it was intended. And you could make an argument that even if they were, they really should have been, you know, checking whether or not it was overlapping. So regardless, this is just another example of a clever use of remapping in order to access SMRAM when you're not supposed to be able to. And finally, the last uh, remapping attack is overlapping PCIe MMIO bars with SMM. So you learned all about the MMIO bars in the PCIe section. And the interesting thing here is basically what if an attacker overlapped a bar with SMM and then specifically, it can't just be, you know, any bar. It has to be essentially a bar that SMM, the SMI handler itself, actually accesses. So in the research, they showed, you know, a bunch of different uh, base address registers that are accessed via SMI handlers. So the idea is, step one, from outside of the OS, you overlap the MMIO range with SMM. Step two, you wait for the SMI handler to write to what they think is a PCI memory mapped IO range, but it will actually be redirected in in the context of SMM and uh, actually overwrite themselves somewhere inside of this range. So another remapping attack. So the question is, are there other ways to remap, right? So each of these was kind of, you know, found independently. They weren't, you know, specifically saying, oh, I want to find another way to remap. They're just trying to say, like, I want to get into SMRAM somehow. Over time, one comes to recognize that this is a general category. And so, you know, why, why can't there be more things, right? So really it comes down to, you know, someone needs to read all sorts of chunks of the Intel documentation, play around with it, and maybe they will find another location which can allow for remapping over SMRAM and allowing to write and bypass the access controls like these.